Well, congratulations on your ASC award nomination. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It's a pretty wild ride so far. So excited to see what happens. Yeah. Well, I'd love to to kind of go through uh, the process of, of you getting involved in this film, um, you know, the making of it, what you really loved about the process. Um, it... Yeah, I mean, I'd love to. Let's start with the collaboration between you and the director, who also happens to be your wife. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the biggest collaboration. Is yeah, we collaborate on life, but um, yeah, Elaine and I have been working together for almost a decade now, um, and we have made quite a few films together, um, and usually work as a you know husband wife two person team. Um, King Cole was a bit of a bigger production, brought on some outside producers and a little extra help. Um, but sort of the core um, team of what we always do is just her and I. So one of us always directs, and then I usually shoot, and she runs sound. Um, and we've done a lot of observational and verite films uh, in the past, and that's kind of how we always operated. And so, you know, with King Cole, it's a very personal story for Elaine. So she is from the coal fields. She's the uh, daughter of a coal miner. She still has family that works in the coal mines and grew up, obviously, in West Virginia and Appalachia, as I did as well. And she wanted to tell a story about how coal is more than just a resource for the region. It's really a, a way of life and a culture and kind of what happens when your uh, identity is tied to a resource or tied to an industry. And then what happens when that industry, you know, um, goes downhill, right? And, mm -hmm. and stops providing sort of the, the life and the lifestyle um, that, that it has for, you know, many, many, many decades. So she really wanted to explore that and, and really capture a lot of the coal cultural events um, that have been happening ever since she was a child, right? Like coal, right. Pa coal pageants, uh, coal fun runs where they throw black coal dust on you, fake coal dust, just to be clear, but <laughs> um, you know, the coal drop at the New Year's Eve. So all these things that were really starting to die out and especially since um, COVID, when they, a lot of them got canceled for a year or two, you know, a lot of them haven't returned. And so Elaine in 2019, 2020, um, really captured maybe some of the last times a lot of these will ever be done. Um, and then, you know, we did that in a very similar way we've done our past films, which was uh, very observational, allow things to happen in the scene and just observe what is happening. And for Elaine specifically, she, she just decided that wasn't enough, right? You know, we, we've always sort of thought, you know, and, and known that, um, you know, the region could be so much more than just coal. Uh, and so, we really started to think about, and she really wanted to focus on sort of an imagining of the future. What can the future look like? And that's when we started to sort of play with uh, elements of fables and magical realism to to weave into the documentary. Um, but yeah, I mean, it started out with Elaine and, and our co-producer Molly just um, uh, documenting a f some of these cool events, and then I would help out in that as well. And then you know, when she decided she wanted to make it more than just, you know, just documenting events, I came on board more officially to, to sort of spearhead the cinematography from that standpoint, or from that point forward. Mm -hmm. Well, after, you know, coming from a place where you and her had worked together on so many more verite projects over the years, what was that process like of, of figuring out uh, the visual style of something that has these elements of magical realism and just is, is uh, very different? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's nice when you are married to your director and as a cinematographer, you obviously can spend a lot of time sort of discussing the way you want to do things. And Elaine really got into, you know, fairy tales um, and, you know, watching all the different versions of Alice in Wonderland that have, and Wizard of Oz that have happened over the years. And so, you know, we would we would reference a lot of those in our shooting is like we wanted to create a almost fairy tale um, mystique around mm -hmm. portions of the film and the magical realism. And... You know, when we started filming those um, different scenes, you know, we wanted to have sort of more than just, oh, here's some pretty nature, but, you know, a vehicle to sort of follow and take us through these this, these imaginings of the future. And so um, Elaine and her co-producer, Molly, they went to different dance studios across uh, Appalachia and West Virginia specifically to find, you know, two young girls that could sort of be our characters and people that we would follow through through these lands. Um, and that's where they found Lady and G Laney and Gabby, who are in the film. Um, and, and we just, you know, kind of treated those as 
if we were shooting a almost fiction fairy tale, you know, we didn't, we didn't script anything. We just placed them in scenes, but it allowed us to focus um, our camera on someone, right. And something mm -hmm. rather than just sort of these general events. And, and so we were always just trying to think of different ways visually that we could make it feel a little bit more, more than realistic, right. A little bit hyper realistic. Uh, and we did that through just lensing um, and just being able to focus on Lainey and Gabby more specifically as, as we move from scene to scene. Yeah. Are, are there any particular scenes uh, or moments that stand out to you as either technically challenging or just super satisfying with how you were able to to film them? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I mean, by far the most complex scene is the very last scene where we actually hold a memorial for King Cole or the idea of King Cole, right? It's not about mm -hmm. the industry, but instead sort of the the culture of King Cole and, and his um, dominion over the land. Um, and that was, you know, really became almost like event planners is, you know, we actually held a memorial on top of a hillside in kind of the middle of nowhere, West Virginia, uh, and, you know, close to 100 people showed up. And so we, and we didn't know what anyone was going to say. We just, you know, invited a bunch of people to come who would be interested in doing something like this. And amazingly, the community really showed up and they all wrote different eulogies and poems and stories about what they would say to sort of the, the dying king. And once it started and the procession went up the hill, we just sort of let it play for, you know, a two hour event. And so wow. it was very much a, you know, we're not going to tell ask anyone to do anything over again. We want it to be as realistic as possible as if it was an actual event. And so that, you know, for that shoot specifically, we brought in a couple extra camera folks and, and sound um, and boom operators to help us capture that event because we just let it roll for two hours straight. And it was it really became, um, you know, one of our favorite scenes we've ever shot because it was so powerful as an event itself. Right. So it was great that it fit into the movie the way that it did. And it, and uh, Heather Hanna, who gives the speech at the end, just wrote this beautiful eulogy that we had never met her before that day. Wow. Um, but she just wrote this sort of perfect ending to the film and but it was also satisfying as you know as just an event right it's like after the event was over it felt like we already accomplished something even though you know we still had to edit it and put it in the movie but yeah. uh, that was definitely the most uh, logistically and you know from a director of cinematography standpoint you know directing the different cameras and making sure we we're all capturing what we need to capture at the right time um and so that was that was the most challenging scene but also one of the more rewarding for sure yeah well, what's it like to be nominated for an ASC award for your work on King Cole? Uh, I mean, it's amazing. It's very exciting to be nominated for an, an ASC award. Uh, it was never in my thought process, you know, that like this is something I would be strived for. Um, yeah. You know, we've we've had some uh, luck in the past to be nominated for our short film Heroin on a few different awards. But, you know, it was such a strict observational verite film. You know, I never really thought too much about you know, winning awards for cinematography, for example, even though I, I do a lot of commercial work on the side and, um, you know, my, our documentaries have been so just capture the story, you know, be in the right place at the right time. But this film really allowed us to to sort of sit back and think about how we wanted to present, you know, the the ideas and the story that we were we were shooting. And, um, you know, we've never really haven't done that as much before in some of our past work. It's been so strictly verite and observational. Um, so that was a really fun process and just in terms of how do we want to create the visuals and what what do we want to um, pass along to the viewer you know what what are we trying to uh, have them respond emotionally uh, through the visuals and, and it was really a film where the visuals really mattered and I you know for some of our past films I think they're they're finely shot but it, I wouldn't say that necessarily right it's about the story it's about the heart right. it's about the action and so there's something really nice about working on a film where it's like, no, the cinematography matters to actually get across the idea of the story and get across what we're trying to accomplish. And so, you know, to have that recognized by the ASC and, um, you know, a few other uh, awards that have uh, popped up so far has been really, really exciting and, and very gratifying. Yeah.